Hello and welcome to another Repfer video. Today we're looking at a faulty Sony amplifier model number TA11. So let's get to it. So first off we're just going to run through the controls and just see what the issue is. So as you can see straight away from that video, massive amounts of distortion. So it doesn't seem to be focused on one knob. It just seems to be across the board, no matter what you do, the, the distortion's there. I would probably say the right hand channel is worse, but the left hand channel still does have a bit of distortion as well. So the first thing we need to do is get the case lid off and then we can look inside and start doing some diagnosis. This lid has three screws either side that need to be removed and then the case lid can come off. So this damage that's on the lid here, this was caused in transit. Uh, I don't think it was packaged particularly well, but it obviously didn't help with the way it was treated in post. So you can see it's pretty well clogged up with dust. I'm just going to run the hoover around quickly just to get a bit of that out. Not going too mad, obviously I don't want to damage any components while I'm going around with the hoover. I'm not sure if people have been in here looking at this previously because the power supply inside is loose. I mean it might have just worked loose where it was in transit, but I can't see that myself. So that's a quick hoover done, it just makes it a little bit better to work around, just see what I'm dealing with. Now I was actually quite surprised about the inside of this unit. I thought there'd be a little bit more going on than this. It's actually quite empty. Um, I was thinking it was going to be a bit more fuller. I've got the Sony TA1150 amp that's on one of my other videos. And when you look inside that, that is actually packed in with a lot of stuff. So I thought being around the similar sort of era, I thought it might have been the same. So obviously the TA11 might not be as high end as the TA1150 and that probably has a lot to do with what's inside. The TA1150 has a lot more going on, but I'm hoping that the TA11, when it is all sorted out, that it will sound good and still be a nice little system to use. Now you can see that I've just removed the front fascia panel. Pretty simple to do. There's two screws at the top, two screws at the bottom, and then you just got to pull off all the knobs on the front and then the, the two VU meters they're just stuck on the back. So these just need to be unstuck and then you can pull the front panel off. And this little panel with the light bulb, there's just a little clip that holds that in. So you've got to push the center of the clip out and then it'll be able to be removed. And now all the control knobs, they're all held in place by a nut. So I just got to get the spanner on these to get them off. I'm not sure why I tried to do that with my fingers. So here I'm just removing some of the screws on the front panels and then I can remove the lower screw and the two side screws that hold the front panel onto the lower panel. This switch actually has an earth cable connected to the upper securing screw. So when this goes back on it just needs to be fitted back in place correctly. And now there's just three screws that hold the front panel on to the main casing, one underneath and then one either side. And now that's all done, you can now remove the front panel from the system. So what I decided to do here before I went any further, I thought I'd use the deoxit on some of the controls just to see if that would help. To be honest, I don't think it will, but I thought I'd give it a go, it won't hurt. It's always worth doing it anyway, just to refresh inside of the controls. It does solve quite a few issues, but I don't think it will actually solve this one, but like I say, it's worth giving it a go first. 
So you can see I'm just working my way around all the controls, just getting some deoxid in there, just working the controls, trying to get it in and around, making sure that I work it as best as I can into the area. So as you can see, I just hooked up the front panel just to give it a quick check after doing the deoxit. Um, you can see there's no difference whatsoever, um, but it's worth doing anyway. I probably would have done it no matter whether it solved it or not because it will make the controls work a lot better when it is working right. Now I'm just trying to get access to the main circuit board. You have to undo the two screws at the back and then the circuit board can sort of rotate up uh, and then you can get to the other side of it. So this circuit board does have quite a lot of transistors on it that are known to be noisy. So not that I recommend doing this, but I'm gonna actually going to replace them without testing them. All the noisy ones that are known to be noisy, because they'll need doing anyway. So I'll just do them, test it again, and then see how that goes. You'll see that just before I started removing this transistor, that I was trying to power down some of the capacitors. I just went around the board and just made them safe, made sure there's no voltage left in them. And I tested them with a multimeter to make sure they had low voltage. I won't show every transistor being removed and refitted. I'll just do a couple of them just to show the process. Obviously, all the rest of them are just going to be the same as these. So just to save time on the video, I'll just cut through that. When fitting the transistors, you need to make sure the legs match on the board. Um, so the three legs will be different pinout on some transistors compared to others. So this just needs to make sure that you're getting them right. So I've just worked all the way around, changed the transistors that are known to be faulty. And now we can give it another test to see if that's solved anything. And that's a big no. <laughs> and that's precisely why you should really test it before doing any of these repairs, because you can just chuck money at it for no reason. Now, I'm pretty sure I can get this repaired anyway, so I thought I'll change the transistors. They're known to be faulty anyway, so like I said before, they're worth doing. Worst case scenario, if I can't get the amplifier fixed, then I'll just pull them all back out and they can go again. On this circuit board, there's quite a few fused resistors. These are also known to be items that can go faulty. So I'm just going around testing any resistance on them and hopefully we can find an issue there. So the last one I've just checked there, that one seemed to have an open circuit. So I'm gonna pull that one out and get it changed. There was also another resistor which seemed to be putting out the wrong resistance. So I'm gonna come back to that one in a little while. I'm gonna get this one changed, try it, but I'm pretty sure that other one's not quite right. These were the closest thing I could find to snip the ends off. Now after that quick test, the right channel was working much better, sounding much more normal, but there's still some sort of issue with the left channel. So I'm pretty sure that other resistor, which was giving out the wrong resistance, I think that one might be faulty too. So I'm gonna pull that one out, have a quick look, and then look at replacing it. So stupidly here, I didn't have the multimeter in view of the camera, so you can't actually see what it's giving out, but the old resistor was putting out something like 150 ohms it was measuring, when it should be 180. So I took it out, measured it, obviously seen that it said 150-ish, measured the new one, that said 180, which is what it should be. So this fluctuation could be the cause of the issue. As you can hear from that demonstration, the distortion's all gone now. So obviously the fault was the two fuses. Now, I don't know if there was any issues with the transistors, but they were replaced also, so that'll make it much better. Here, I'm just giving it another clean up, just get rid of the dust, just brushing around, um, and then just hovering the hoover over to get as much dust as I can. This will also help with any potential heat issues inside the amplifier. So just to reiterate with this, I'm not actually going too mad with the hoover. I'm not brushing too hard. I don't want to damage any components or knock them off the circuit board. Now to tighten down the power supply, which is loose for some reason.
and then getting the, and now we can look at getting the front panel back on and then start fixing the rest of the components on. So three screws holding the front panel on, one underneath, one either side. Not forgetting the RF cable on this switch. These cables are just located on the front panel. There's a little piece that hangs off which the cables wrap onto. Now I can look at getting the watt meters put back through and then they can go on the main front panel. Also the front light bulb, that also needs to be located back onto the front panel with the one clip. Now you'll see shortly that the left watt meter is not working as well as it should. So we'll look at that a bit further when we get to it, but I'm presuming this was a bit lazy from before. Uh, obviously the video shows it moving a little bit but now all the repairs are done it is quite noticeable compared to the right channel it has nothing to do with the wiring because I swapped them over just to check that it's the actual meter itself which has got a bit lazy there's also a couple of adjustment screws on the board for the left and the right channel so with this you can alter the voltage going into each of them so I do mess around with this to get it to work a bit better um, just to balance it out and also there's a little adjustment screw on the actual VU meter itself uh, which you can loosen which helps it move better so with the combination of these two I get it working better I'm not saying perfect but when it's it's sort of mid volume they're working pretty close to each other So I'm just continuing to fit the parts back up on the front panel, just put the nuts around all the knob controls, um, the screws are mainly done, and then we can look at putting the face of your panel back on. The VU watt meters were just held on by tape, so I'm just going to do the same, tape them back on, it makes it easier if you need to get them off again. So the front panel is just getting put back on now and then there's two screws at the top, two at the bottom and then we can put all the switch knobs back on. Just a quick wipe off across the top before I put the lid on, it's just a bit grubby up there. So now the lid's going back on, just three screws either side which secures this back onto the main shell.
and now all the switches and knobs can go back on. And I'm just making sure when I'm putting the knobs back on that the markings are in the correct location. Now we can look at setting it all up and just making sure that everything's working okay and do a quick test. As a note, you can see the left channel VU meter is lazy here. This is pre-adjusting. So as you can see it's turned out really well, the sound's no longer distorted and the case looks a bit better with a wipe down. So all in all, a successful repair. Thanks again for taking the time to watch the video. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.